All right, here we are ready to learn about provincial government. We just finished up with local government before we went on our um, leave from school. So now we're moving on to provincial government. So you will see that this particular slideshow has the services provided by the provincial government, how elections work, and a little bit about our Lieutenant Governor. I want you to read the material on slides 5 to 13, but then come back and answer the questions on slides 2 to 4. They're up at the front, so we're, they're easy for Mrs. Jill and I to correct, um, but please read the material before answering the questions. So I'll just skip through here. Um, well, I'll let you know that um, they are multiple choice. You can see that you can type your answers in the spots. Um, you can just put the letter of the answer that you feel best suits it. On this particular page, you use the information that is up at the top to answer the question at the bottom. All right, so we have our regular who does what. It's a good reminder of what services are provided by the municipal, provincial, and federal government. So this time you'll be focusing on provincial. Even though it talks about Ontario specifically, it does apply to each province, including Alberta. So please watch who does what and look at the provincial services. Here's a layout of how this works, um, who's involved, where they meet, and what services are provided. Um, in our provincial government, we have people including the Lieutenant Governor, we have our Premier, uh, we have what, members of the Legislative Assembly, and we have Cabinet members. Our Premier used to be uh, Rachel Notley, she's now um, the official opposition leader, and our Premier is Jason Kenney. Our government meets in the Legislative Assembly during fall and spring sessions. Those sessions last about six weeks and they make laws, bills, in this case for the provincial government, that have to do with health care. Um, they are in charge of our driver's license, highways, courts, education, um, that type of thing. Anytime you see a Government of Alberta symbol, you'll know that it is a provincial service. So. Just to clarify, we have our Lieutenant Governor, Premier, members of the Legislative Assembly and our Cabinet. Um, they are elected and they are belonging to a political party. Our province is split up into different constituencies and we'll talk a little bit more about elections as we go. The particular provincial services that are most prominent in Alberta is education, our resources, and our health care. You can see the web at the top right hand side that explains a little bit more like children's services, seniors and community support, tourism, agriculture, and Aboriginal relations. But it's really important to know that education, our resources such as oil, and our health care um, are where most of our money goes to. And of course, um, some provinces have taxes and some just use the um, federal tax to help pay for things. The provinces also get money from the federal government and the provinces also give money to the municipal governments as well. If we look at the structure here, we have at the very top the Lieutenant Governor. It may look to you like Lieutenant in the United States, that's how they pronounce it, but we come from a British background and that's how they pronounce it and, and we always will. They are what's called the symbolic head of government and that is because they are the representation of the Queen because we were um, part of the British colonies. Well, we still are part of the British colonies, but um, that just symbolizes our relationship with England. The head of our government is the Premier. They are elected. The Premier then chooses cabinet ministers or department leaders. Um, those cabinet ministers come out of the Legislative Assembly. The Legislative Assembly is made up of MLAs, so members of the Legislative Assembly, and they are um, chosen by election. They're split into two groups, the government, which is the party in power, MLAs, and the opposition, which is the second place grouping of people. Here is a little bit of information about each particular group or person and the um, roles that they play. So please take time to read this over. It's really important that you understand the different um, responsibilities for each person. 
Specifically looking at the lieutenant governor, there are three specific things that they are responsible for. Um, primarily, the first thing to note is that they are not elected. They are the symbolic head of the government, but they are chosen by the governor general, who is um, the symbolic tie to England federally. So the prime minister actually makes a suggestion as who they think would be a really great lieutenant governor. Um, and they are appointed in that way. They have three different specific roles. One of them is to act as the Queen's representative. So to do that, they are doing constitutional role in the legislature. They are going to summon, which means starts, and dissolve the legislative sessions, which dissolve means end. They're going to read the speech from the throne, which kind of gives um, a idea of what the six weeks will be discussing, what kind of the agenda will be for the um, Legislative Assembly time that they have. And they will also make sure that there's a premier and they swear in the cabinet. Now, swearing does not mean using bad words. They mean that the Lieutenant Governor would, um, when there's new cabinet members, they would make sure that they are sworn in and say that they will uphold all the um, responsibilities of what a cabinet minister has. The one number one thing that the lieutenant governor does in the constitutional role is give royal assent to bills. Bills are the laws provincially made, but they cannot move forward until the lieutenant governor basically says, yep, I agree with this bill, let's continue. Um, she basically puts her hand on the bill, and that is a symbolic gesture that the um, monarchy agrees with what the law will be. She also does a ceremonial role, which means she attends ceremonies to honor citizens. Here she is. Um, by the way, the pictures here are of Lois Mitchell. She's our current Lieutenant Governor. Um, she's done a lot so far um, during her time. So she will um, open up businesses, she will um, give awards to dignitaries, that type of thing, and, and she goes to these different types of ceremonies. Her social role really ties in with our ties to the British monarchy. So anytime that royalty comes to Alberta, they will um, be met by her and she will tour them around. She, so for example, if Harry and Meghan come and they visit or um, you know, Prince William and Kate come, she would tour them around. Here she is with um, the queen when she visited. So she's also an honorary patron to service and community organizations and she travels to special events and milestones. So anytime that there's a big event, she will be there. You can click on this website um, to check out some more of her photos and videos and she has lots of interesting things there. Um, there's a question at the bottom of this page, so please make sure that you um, put the answer that you felt should be the correct one. On to elections. We're going to go through this um, briefly because we talked a lot about it during our student vote at the beginning of the year. Um, we did a federal election through student vote, however the provincial election is ran exactly the same. We have Alberta split into 87 districts. They're called constituencies. Another name for constituencies is riding. And every one of those sections will be represented by an MLA, with it, which is a member of the Legislative Assembly. We want to make sure that we have elections so we can help um, choose people to represent us. These MLAs always represent a political party, which is different than local government. Um, political parties include the United Conservative Party, the Liberal Party, the New Democrat Party. Depending on which province you're in, um, they'll have different ones being represented. You can vote in an election if you are a Canadian citizen, you're 18 years of age or older, and you are a resident of Alberta. On the day of the election, if you can't vote, there are advanced polls, as well as if you need um, special accommodations, um, perhaps you're physically unable to attend, um, you might be an inmate, you might be living in a remote area, there are special ballots for you as well. So these are all important things to remember as we look at the pillars of democracy, which 
um, representation. Obviously, this is um, providing us with people to represent us and also equity because the elections are free and fair and making sure that everyone can take part. So if we were to compare our school government and the layout of the provincial government, we can compare River Heights to Alberta. So Mr. King Hunter is our principal. So he would be the, like the leader of the province of River Heights, just like Jason Kenney is the leader of our provincial government. Second place would be Mrs. Gale, the vice principal. Same as second place would be the leader of the opposition, which is Rachel Notley. The Lieutenant Governor has a symbolic role. They have lots of responsibilities and it's really important that they have their say on things. And for us, that would be our Secretary, Mrs. Foran, Mrs. Stuber. Um, so that's important to understand. She doesn't have her own classroom, but she's responsible for a lot of the school. The teachers would be like, being elected members of the Legislative Assembly. So every single classroom would be like a little constituency or a riding. And all of us, Mrs. Reiniger, Mrs. Geo, we would be like the MLAs, like we were elected to be the leaders of our constituency. Um, any of the Legislative Assembly members would then be chosen by um, the Premier to be Cabinet Ministers. So Mr. King Hunter, being the principal or like the premier, would choose some teachers to be on a committee. Um, some MLAs would be on a committee. Maybe they want to be on the um, um, health and wellness committee. Then they're like a cabinet minister. So as I said, um, the province is split up into constituencies, into different sections, and that's all dependent on population. Um, so continuing to compare our school, our classrooms are like a constituency or they're like a riding. Um, this picture is a results from the 2019 provincial election. Um, all of the colors represent, um, the blue represents the United Conservative Party and the orange represents the New Democrat Party. Most of the province, of course, um, voted for the United Conservative Party and a small portion um, within Calgary and Lethbridge voted for the New Democrat Party. So here's another look at the constituencies on the left hand side. Um, the red divisions just kind of show where the um, sections are, constituencies or ridings. Um, over the years, they've changed a little bit. Um, we have our um, might be in our next one. We have Drew Barnes and Michaela Glasgow. They were elected to be our MLAs for the Medicine Hat, Cardston, Warner area. So I just want to review how elections are ran and I have a fake province for you. And the fake province is Spongeberta. Spongeberta. So all of these sections are constituencies or ridings. And we have some really important political parties. First of all, we have the Bikini Bottom Busters Party, and the leader of that party is SpongeBob. Then we have the Clarinet Concert Party. They're, they're really passionate about um, clarinets, and Squidward is in charge of that one. We also have the Moneymaker Party. They're kind of passionate, obviously, about money, and Mr. Krabs deals with them. He leads that party. And then we have the Starfish Supporters Party which Patrick leads that group, um, very passionate about supporting all of the starfish. So what I did was I went ahead and um, put the election results in, and in the top left-hand side, right over here, we have the Bikini Bottom Busters Party. That person won the election in this area. So there would have been a, a clarinet concert party, person also running a moneymaker party person, a starfish supporters party person, but the majority of this constituency or riding voted for Bikini Bottom Busters. Then we have the starfish supporters won this riding, so they are going to go to Edmonton to the Legislative Assembly. So is this Bikini Bottom person that's going to go to Edmonton? We have another Bikini Bottom representative here that he's going to travel to all, uh, Edmonton. And same with the moneymaker person that won this area. Clarinet concert parties, starfish, moneymaker, moneymaker, clarinet, concert, starfish, starfish. 
So each of these sections and the party that I put down represents someone who won that area. They, their job is to represent that section of the province of Spongeberta. They're going to travel all the way to the capital city and they're gonna say, you know what? My residence in um, this area of Spongeberta um, really needs this. So um, they would talk about that. So basically what happens is the amount of constituencies or ridings, the, the party that has the most people that won their riding becomes the party in power, the government party. So in this case, the starfish supporters are the government or party in power because they had the most MLAs when their constituency are riding. Because Patrick is in charge of that party, he becomes the premier. He becomes the premier because he's the leader of the party with the most MLAs that won their constituency or riding. The second place people um, that won the second most amount of constituencies or ridings are the opposition party. And that was the moneymaker party in this case. And the leader of the opposition is Mr. Krabs. So that's basically how elections work. Um, all candidates that run for election are nominated. They do a campaign. And then of course they're voted in by the constituents or the citizens of that area. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense about what elections entail. As you continue on, um, just note that these people will travel to the legislature, legislature um, the legislative assembly, and they will be speaking on behalf of the people who voted them in. So just a reminder, as you listen to this video or you read through this information, that at the end, you're going to go all the way back to the second and third and fourth pages and answering these questions here. And also one more question down with the Lieutenant Governor in this area as well. So thanks for listening and learning all about provincial government.